There is a ton of insanely strong and OP gear that you can get in Act 1 of Baldur's Gate 3, and today we're going to talk about it. Let's get to it. So I don't think people realize exactly how many insanely good items there are in Act 1. Items that can not only set you up for insane success, but also can last you throughout the entire game. So many, in fact, that once I started to get into the research of this video, I realized I'm going to have to break it up into two parts. I thought it would be best to combine as many of these items together to create combos for bases for builds as I could. The first one of those being the no hit reverb combo. I touched on a few of these in my Radiant Knight build but have found some others that work in tandem with that setup even better. So the first item is the Gloves of Belligerent Skies. This pair of gloves can be picked up in the Githyanki Crash and it states that when the wearer deals thunder, lightning, or radiant damage it inflicts two turns of reverberation upon the target. The next item is the Holy Lance helm. This is picked up at the Rosymorn Monastery and it states that creatures who miss their attacks against the wearer must make a dexterity saving throw or take 1d4 radiant damage. It also gives you a plus one bonus to constitution saving throws. Then we have the Luminous Armor. The Luminous Armor states that it has radiant shockwave. When the wearer deals radiant damage, they cause a radiant shockwave. Radiant shockwave applies radiant orb to all affected entities within a three meteor radius. Radiant orb is a stacking debuff that adds negative one to attack rolls for each stack you have. This armor can be picked up at the Salunite outpost in the Underdark. The next item is the Boots of Stormy Clamor. It states that when the wearer inflicts a condition upon a hostile creature, they also inflict two turns of reverberation. For those of you who are unfamiliar with reverberation, it states that the affected entity has a negative one penalty to strength, dexterity, constitution saving throws. It also states that when the entity has five or more turns of reverberation, they take one to four thunder damage and they must succeed a constitution saving throw of 10 or they are knocked prone. Creatures that are immune to thunder damage cannot receive reverberation. The boots of stormy clamor can be picked up in the underdark. They're sold by a trader. The next two items are the weapons for this setup. The first one of those being the baneful. In order for this weapon to work, it needs to be put on something that can have a packed weapon. So either an eldritch knight or a warlock. It states that it is a favored weapon so it gets plus one to damage and attack rolls. The fun part to this weapon is that when you attack something with it, you also have the chance to apply Bane to the target. When a target has Bane on it, it takes a 1d4 penalty to attack rolls and saving throws. The chance to apply Bane to the target is relatively high at a DC 14 for Charisma. When you apply it, it lasts for two turns. This blade is also sold by a vendor in the Underdark. The next weapon is the Hunter's Dagger. We're going for this for twofold. One, it applies a condition the condition is rupture, states that on hit, the target must succeed a DC 13 constitution saving throw or become ruptured. Now, if you'll remember, reverberation lowers their chance to make constitution saving throws. Rupture states that the target takes 1d4 piercing damage when moving. Each time you move, you reduce the condition's duration by one. Now, you want to trigger as many attacks on this character as possible, so you want to initiate attacks of opportunity. There is a really high chance that the target is going going to miss you when they go to attack you, and you definitely want to do this if they already have a few turns of radiating orb on them. This means you are stepping away from the target. So if you hit the target with this dagger and you apply rupture to them, that means in most cases they have to move to get to you, and they will move to get to you if they are a melee unit. The Hunter's Dagger is sold by Roa Moonglow in the Shattered Sanctum. This combo of items is absolutely insane. I cannot stress to you how absolutely broken this initial setup can become later on in the game, especially when you get other items and your character build itself becomes stronger. It essentially creates a negative feedback loop to anything that is trying to attack you, and you end up with a situation of things attacking you, missing, and falling prone continuously. It can easily solo fights that you should normally not take on with your average setups, and this set of items can easily carry you through the entire game. This next set of items is what I'm referring to as the Master Thief set, and it does exactly as its title states. It creates one of the most versatile setups for a thief that you can possibly imagine. The first item on the list is the Graceful Cloth. This item is so incredibly strong. I would state that it is one of the more OP items in the game. That is for multiple reasons. First off, it gives you permanent Cat's Grace, just the straight Cat's Grace buff. This buff is something that you can normally get through using the Enhanced Ability spell. This gives it to you permanently, and it states that the target has advantage on Dexterity checks. This is 
is all dexterity checks, anything that checks your dexterity. So saving throws, stealing, sleight of hand, all of that. On top of that, you take half fall damage. Not only that, it also gives you Nimble as a Cat, which states you gain plus one bonus to your dexterity saving throws. So not only do you have bonus on them, you also get a plus one to them. And it also increases your jump distance by 1.5 meters, and it increases your dexterity by two to a maximum of 20. This means once you get your first feat, you can pick ability improvements and pump your dexterity to 18, and this will put you at 20. You can do this by level four. The next thing you want to pick up is the Club of Hill Giant Strength. This can be obtained in the Underdark, and this sets your strength to 19, which is effectively 18 because that additional point, that odd number, isn't going to do you any good. But this means that at level four, it is possible to have 18 in strength and 20 in dexterity, and that leaves you a ton of ability points to just put wherever else you want to put them. So now we have a ton of dexterity and a ton of strength, so we're going to follow that up with the Titan String Bow, which can be purchased from Brem the Trader after you complete the mission, find the missing shipment. This bow is absolutely fantastic for this setup. It is a rare plus one long bow that allows the wielder to add their strength modifier to the damage dealt with the weapon. So this means when we attack, we get plus five from our dexterity and plus four additional damage from our strength. That means that even if you roll a one, you're still doing 11 damage. So the next thing we want to grab is the smuggler's ring. This can be picked up from a skeleton that's hidden in a bush on the lower path of the risen road. And this gives us plus two to stealth and plus two to sleight of hand. And last but not least, we want to grab the gloves of archery. The gloves of archery give us proficiency with longbows and short bows and add an additional two damage to our ranged attacks. Normally, you're just going to hit like a truck, even more so when you perform sneak attacks. So let's talk about what we've done here with this combo of items and our specific setup with our ability points. So now you should have a character that has 19 in strength, 20 in dexterity, and then just points wherever else you wanted to put points. I would advise putting at least 16 into constitution. So you are now somewhat tanky as well. You have a character that is very strong, can pick up goblins and throw them. On top of that is very agile because you have maxed out dexterity and all of this can be done super early on in the game. Not only that, you are a thieving master. You have plus 11 to your sleight of hand and plus 11 to your stealth. You can pretty much steal anything and everything you want. This is fantastic for people who are using lots of scrolls because it's pretty much a guaranteed steal. You can steal up to 500 gold with ease and you have advantage on all of these actions. Now, I would recommend putting the club of hill giant strength in your offhand and equipping something else better as your main hand weapon, just in case you have to do a melee attack. In all of the footage that you're seeing, I'm using the knife of the under mountain king, but use whatever you want here and build whatever you want after you get those initial levels into rogue. I would go at least rogue four and then spec into whatever else you want. You have the ability points to literally be anything else or combo with anything else. And last but not least, we have the lightning combo. This setup is perfect for any type of spellcaster that specializes in lightning damage. With just the shocking grasp cantrip alone, you can do absolutely insane damage at level four. So in no particular order, let's start off with the Sparks Wall. This is a ring that states the wearer can't be electrocuted, and you also have resistance to lightning damage. This can be picked up in the Arcane Tower in the Underdark. Next is the Protecty Sparks Wall. This states that you have high spell casting, so you gain a plus one bonus to your spell save DC, and the wearer also gains plus one to armor class and saving throws as long as they have lightning charges. This can be picked up in a gilded chest at the end of the trapped bridge in the Grimforge. Then we have the real Sparky Sparks Wall, which is a shield, and this states that you have the Lightning Aura ability, which when activated consumes three lightning charges to release a blast of electricity that damages and jolts nearby enemies. Jolt is a condition where the target takes 1d4 lightning damage each turn and cannot take reactions. It's removed upon leaving the Lightning Aura. When you activate this for three turns, anything that stands near you is going to take 1d4 damage, not be able to take reactions, and continue to take 1d4 lightning damage every turn as long as they stand next to you for three turns. Then we have the Water Sparks. The Water Sparks state that when the wearer stands in water during combat, it becomes electrified. Electrified water deals 1d4 lightning damage to anything that is standing in it at the start of its turn. These can be found in a gilded chest in Minthara's area in the Shattered Sanctum. Next, we have the Sparkle Hands. These gloves have two abilities. One is Conductive Strikes. On hit with an unarmed attack, the wearer gains two lightning charges. Then it also has Effective Transmitter, which states that while imbued with lightning charges, attacks 
hits against constructs and foes wearing metal armor gain advantage. So ideally, these gloves are made for builds that run around punching everything, but what we are after is that advantage on attacking targets that are wearing metal armor or constructs. You could replace these without much loss to the overall combo if you had a better option, especially with some stuff that you can find later on in the game, but early on in Act 1, these can be extremely handy. These gloves can be picked up in a wooden chest that is found in the sunlit wetlands. Next, we have the Necklace of Elemental Augmentation, which can be found in the Githyanki Crash. This states that when one of your cantrips deals acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage, you add your spellcasting modifier to the damage dealt. This adds a nice little chunk of damage to Shocking Grasp. For the weapon, I chose the Spell Sparkler, which is a rare quarter staff. It is a quest reward option for doing the quest Rescue the Grand Duke. This staff gives you electric veins, which states that when the wearer deals damage with a spell or cantrip, they gain two lightning charges. Now, for the headpiece for this combo, you have two options, and it's going to really depend on your build for which option you want to go with. There is the Warped Headband of Intellect, which can be picked up in the Blighted Village. This sets your intelligence to 17, so effectively 16. This is absolutely fantastic early game if you're doing an intelligence build, which would be most likely a wizard or an eldritch knight. Your other option is the life bringer, and this one's just kind of nice because it gives you temporary hit points whenever you gain lightning charges. It's only three temporary hit points, but three temporary hit points that constantly refresh as you lose them and do more lightning damage and gain them back is a really nice little perk to have early on in the game. Later on in the game, there are a lot better items that you could replace this item with. And this is sold by Blurg in the Mushroom Colony in the Underdark. Both of the headpieces are a really good option for this setup. It's just going to depend on what your initial build is because this build can work for a lot of different setups. This turns your Shocking Grasp into a destructive hand of doom. If a target's wet, you can easily do upwards of 40 damage. You get a ton of lightning charges every turn and you're going to be proccing the bonus damage that you get from having lightning charges. So if you're not familiar with what lightning charges do, it states that lightning courses through you, you have plus one to your attack rolls and you deal an additional one lightning damage. If you have five lightning charges, they're consumed for the next time you do damage and you add an additional 1d8 lightning damage to that attack. You lose one charge per turn. There are a few different build setups that this grouping of items would work really well on. You can end up doing absolutely insane amounts of damage with lightning damage with this setup. All right, and that is it for part one of this two-part series and our first grouping of items. If you found this video helpful or informational at all, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I put out the second part to this video. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.